Daniel chapter 3 verse 19 now chapter 3 is a very interesting chapter that's why we're taking it slowly this is not a chapter you know you do in one day so what's happened is Nebuchadnezzar has made this image everybody is to fall down and worship this image when the jukebox plays the problem is there were three Hebrew men still standing and they turned them in to the government in verse 19 then and then they answered the king properly respectfully and with honor then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury that made him even angrier and if you look at verse 13, when he finds out that there, there, there were three people who did not honor his image, he said he was in rage and fury. Now in 19, he's full of fury. So at the report that somebody is not worshiping his image, he gets angry. And then at the report, they say, we're not going to bow down before it. it it's, it's a full of fury. And the form of his visage, his, his looks, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, Imnigo. And you can just imagine that face is looking at them with anger. I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to kill you good. Therefore he spank. And commanded they should eat the furnace one seven times more. Now we're setting up the miracles of God and the signs of God more now. Because this furnace is not just put to the burning. It's one-seventh more than that furnace is usually heated. Than it was want to be heated. And want means... Let's say there, let's say there, was, there, was, a, there was a degree... How much wood you would put in this thing to burn, you better put more in. So it's taking more resources. And he commanded that the most mighty men that were in his army. So he's a <coughs> he doesn't just call, you know, the, the, the recruit. He doesn't just call anybody. He call he calls the most mighty men. Why? Because he figures when he when he's going to do to these three Hebrews, we know there's one other Hebrew named Daniel. Where is he? Who who knows? Who cares? He's not whatever. He's not in the picture. And he figures when he calls these three Jews to their capital punishment for obeying the law, we talked about that last time, if there isn't a revolt by the Jews against the nation because of Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo, he said, that, that's impossible. Well, what happened in the book of Esther when Esther had the king sign Orders that the Jews can defend themselves. The Jews are out killing. Everybody that wanted the Jews dead are now dead themselves. And the king was overwhelmed by what the numbers were. And you know what the problem with the Roman government when they were in Jerusalem? The Jews. Man, they were the most of oh, people to deal with and rule. You know why evidently... Pilate turned Jesus Christ over to, to, to be crucified just to shut those Jews up. When he's standing there, he's got in, in Jerusalem, he's got the entire nation against Jesus. And if he says, no, let Jesus go home, man, those Jews would have stoned him. So he's got the most mighty men for these three men and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. 
So we're learning that you know this ain't just no hot bed. <laughs> then these men were bound in their coats. They're hosing. And women call it today hosiery. Yes, men shall not wear what pertains to the woman, and the woman shall not wear what pertains to the man. The men used to wear the hosing. And you've seen the old pictures. You've seen the pictures of the men in the black hats in Massachusetts. They had the hosings. It was David that had the shepherd's pouch. And it's Jesus that told the disciples, no purses. So when women wear jeans, stop reading America into the Bible, okay? We're not going to wear skirts. Uh, tell that to the Scots. And when you when you see them, you know they're playing the bagpipes and they're marching down their streets and they got swords and they got rifles. You tell them they're not supposed to wear skirts. See, you're reading Americanism. If there's anything you're going to tell your women about being manly, is be a woman and stay home and cook the dinner for your family. But that's a whole different thing. And their hats. And their outer other garments. So as they're standing there before the king, whatever they got on, they are tied. And we're cast in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Look how look how often the things in chapter three are repeated. Chapter three is very important. It, it, it's like the gospels. The death, burial, and resurrection are all four gospels. There are stories that are in three of the Gospels. There are stories that are in all four of the Gospels. Jesus and the devil are in two of the two of the uh, the Gospels, Matthew and Luke. And you only find the, the, the birth date or the birth day and the actual birth of Jesus. You only find it in one gospel by the medical doctor and no one else. I got a book. I got. I got to catch up on my reading, but it's, I think it's called Stereo, Christ in Stereo. It's over there, and when it does, it lines all four gospels up. I gotta get reading. I gotta get reading a lot of books. So, it's important. The Holy Spirit is put in there. Ex when the Holy Spirit, when Jesus says, "Verily, verily," you better pay attention. It's important. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, <laughs> burning fiery furnace, hot, the flame of the fire, <laughs> burning fiery furnace that is hot and flame of fire. This is not a pig rose. Slew those men that took up Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was such an order by the king. They grab them, they tie them up, and as they open up the doors of that furnace, the fire, <laughs> and they wake up in hell like, what on earth just happened? Where, wait a minute. Where did Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego go? Why are we hot? Why are we burning? Because you just got into hell. You say, Why? You don't know? No, I don't know what what. I will curse them that curse you. They grab those Jews. Those Jews are those Jews are under blessing or under curse. And those soldiers would be cursing the Jews by casting. Well, there were orders by the government. Was there not an order by the government to bow down before that before that image? If they didn't bow down. They're going to suffer. Those soldiers say, "Uh, uh, I ain't touching those Jews." Somewhere in that Hebrew's writing, somewhere it says, if you curse them, you're going to be, oh, no, no, sorry. Well, then I'm going to cast you in. I'll, I'll go in with them. How's that? And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo, fell down. So that means this fiery furnace, where they are, they're on top of it. There's a door, and you go down into it. It's a type of hell. 
scientists are trying to trying to now, you know, the earth ain't liquid uh, uh, molten and all that. It's yeah, you just doing what the preachers do. This is a place of Hades. It's all it is. It ain't hell. Go to Hades. Never heard anybody say that in my lifetime. And I lived 18 years as an unsaved man among fishermen, among lobsters, and among metal workers. I never heard anybody say, go to Hades. You take your Bible that says Hades, and you take your mouth that says Hades, you go wash it out with the brimstone of hell and the blood of Jesus Christ. Your air conditioning, maybe you're going there. That's why you want air conditioning. Maybe you're trying to sell it. Well, I'm trying to sell hell, but it's so rotten. How about Hades? Isn't Hades, doesn't that sound so much better? So it pictures hell. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flame, exceedingly hot, the flame, burning, fiery furnace. So those men that took up Chad like me. So this is serious. This thing is a pit or whatever, well, upstanding. There's a door. You got to fall into it. When they open up the door, the flame shot out and burned the mighty men of the army. You say, why is there silence? How come the fire that came out that killed the military men, how come it didn't kill Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo? Right there at that moment, they'd be like, oh, the Lord's protecting us. Imagine them standing there. Pew. Burning hair stinks. Wow. And it does. I, I've I witnessed a body burning. In a car accident, it stinks. I used to smoke cigarettes. I accidentally uh, burned my nose hair. Phew. It stinks. So already God's protecting Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The flames did not get them as it got the soldiers that were leading them. Segregation. And they fell down bound, still, in the, still tied up, in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And there are different degrees in hell. There's a place in the Bible that says the lowest hell, not Hades. A pope will get the worse hell than his congregation. A pastor of a church will get the worse treatment than someone who, who followed him and just say this prayer or had the wrong Bible or the wrong counseling. The shepherd of the sheep will get the worse roasting than the sheep that follow that shepherd. So they fell down, bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. That keeps happening. And Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounding. I mean, as a stone, he's like, he's frozen. He's staring into that furnace like, I, I don't believe what I see. Wait a minute. What happened here? And he rose up in hey, he gets off his throne. He's got his throne. He's well, he's and he's looking down in that flame and surprised he didn't get burned. And spank unto the, his counselors. So evidently you can see what's in on in that fire, that furnace. And there are people around these counselors would be Daniel's buddies. The science, the stargazers. The magicians who don't interpret dreams properly all through the book of Daniel. Did not we cast three men 
bound in the midst of the fire? He's up there. One, two, three. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then answer said unto the king, True, O king. Yeah, we did do three. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo. Who is that? Meshach, Shadrach, Indigo. One, two. He says, astonished. He's looking at I. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. They're not tied no more. You know what? We're not told how they were tied. Were they tied with ropes or were they tied, tied with irons? You picture the stories like this. You put a man in back of a police car with handcuffs. The cop goes off and talking to people. He comes back to the handcuff. He comes back to the car. Opens up the door. He sees two inside the back seat, and the handcuffs are gone. What? Where? Where'd you? What happened, Fred? Didn't I arrest one guy? Yeah. I put the cuffs on him, right? Yeah. I got two men in there, and there's no cuffs. <laughs> What happened? Now, we're stopping at this verse for a reason. Walking in the midst of the fire. Hey, this is pretty neat. Notice, again, they're not trying to get out. Notice what the Bible says. That rich man in hell, when he's talking to Abraham, never said for him to get out. Oh, will you send Lazarus to my family? But he never said, let me out. This is a truly tight picture of hell. And they're walking around. I wonder if they sweated. And they have no hurt. They're walking around like, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, ah, burn. They're not doing that. Now here's the trouble. And the fourth was the form, and the form of the fourth, let me say that three times, is like the Son of God. Now, I'm going to read you something. Ooh, I gotta get rid of my picture here. I'm down here. Hi. ASV. Like a son of the gods. Amplify. Like a son of the gods. CEB. Like one of the gods. CEV. One of the gods. ERV looks like an angel. I think Madonna sang that as one of them, isn't it? Uh, ESV, like a son of the gods. GW, son of the gods. Good news, like an angel. Like I, said, I think Madonna sang it on growing up in an unsafe world. L-E-B, son of a son of, of a God. He got rid of the S. T-L-B, a God, small g. By the way, the God I'm reading, is, is they're all small g. Uh, getting the ones everybody knows. N-A-S-B, son of the gods. N-I-R-V, son of the gods. N-I-V, son of the gods. New King James. That's the closest to the King James. Wow, he actually says the Son of God. But be careful, New King James. 
But wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Still go back into NLT like a god. Be careful with the new King James. I'm just looking at RSV, sons of the gods, son of the gods. And that's about all people would know. Your aim. Sorry, Facebook, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> the video. So, and I like what John Wesley said on, on this verse. Because the scholars think, and this is why they this is why the scholars in the modern Bibles are all messed up. How could Nebuchadnezzar know that there's a son of God? This is beforehand. There is no revelation. Of Jesus Christ the Son of God in the Old Testament really do you really believe that mr. scholar with your head stuck in a toilet with the blue water dying your hair blue <laughs> all right before we see what John Wesley has to say let's go over to Proverbs no one knew about the Son of God Proverbs 30, which is written way before Daniel. This is a time of around the time of Solomon. Verse number four. Now this man starts off. Look at verse one. The words of Agar, the son of Jacob, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithanel. Even to Ithel and you call. You know you call. Did you call me? Oh, okay. I thought you called me. Surely I am more brutish, I'm more animal-like than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learn wisdom nor have knowledge of the whole. I don't know nothing of God. Look at that. Scholars have no knowledge of the holy, but they open up their big mouths with their stupid Bibles. Who has ascended up to heaven or descended? Well, we know who did that. All right, the people in the Old Testament didn't know. Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Well, books like Job and all that, they, they knew. Who has bound the waters in a garment? Ecclesiastes. Who established all the ends of the earth? Well, Genesis tells you. And they had Moses writing the book of Moses, so they knew. What is his name? I am. Jehovah. But they didn't know that, that scholars say. And what is his son's name? What? We just read about God. God the creator. What is God's name? Because he, he said, listen, I don't know nothing about the holy. I want to know, I want to know what God's name is, and I want to know about his son's name. And then look what he says about the word of God in verse 5. Okay? So the scholars say Nebuchadnezzar could never have known about the Son of God, but it's known in Proverbs 30. So, Proverbs 30, verse 4. Let's come over here. Move me down again. Proverbs. Verse 30. Chapter 30, verse 4. Uh, oh. So, all right. Let's take what we read before. What is his name? What is his son's name? What is his name? What is his son's name? What is his name? What is his son's name? What is his name? What is his son's name? What's this person's name? What's the name of the person's child? What is his name? What is his son's name? What is his name? What is his son's name? What is his name? What is his son's name? What is his name? What, is his name? what uh, you got the point? 
The modern Bible say, what is his name? What is his son's name? And then when we go over to Daniel chapter 3, well, he, he has no idea that there's a son of God. No one in the Bible, in the Old Testament, knows there's a son of a God. You say, and you don't correct Proverbs 30, verse 4. But you go over to Nebuchadnezzar, and when he's talking about Jesus, you don't know what you're talking about, and you claim that he doesn't know what he's talking about. And if what I read to you, if your Bible has anything other than the Son of God, Find the nearest garbage can and take that Bible and put it in the garbage can. Take it outside uh, in an area that won't cause no damage. Put some gasoline on it. Add some kerosene on it. Take a pee-pee on it. Put some poopy on it and light it on fire. And go to, the, go to the bookstore. Get yourself a King James Bible. Make sure it says Jesus in Acts chapter 7. And you take that as the very word of God. And if you won't take it, and you will go with the other modern Bibles, you have a Bible of Satan. And I'm not going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that God do whatever he can to get you right, like that man was fornicating with his father's wife. And Paul says, I turn him over to the devil. So you won't do that. I'm already doing it. I've got a list of people I'm praying for. They don't have a King James Bible. And boy, I said, God, go get it for the good that they get right and they can get rewards because they're losing them. King James only is a minor statement in my life. Now, go back to Daniel chapter 3. Well, you're mean. Okay. Well, I'm mean. I'm mean and I'm clean. Look at chapter 4, verse 37. Daniel. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt thee, honored the king, capital K. Oh, who is that? That's Jesus Christ. The king of heaven. That's no earthly king. All whose works are true. So what did Jesus say? I am the way, the true, and the life. His ways are judgment. You mean like the judgment seat of Christ? Where Jesus will be at the great white throne judgment, judging? Okay, go back to Daniel 3. Daniel 3, verse 25. This is important because if your Bible does not say the Son of God, you don't have a Bible. You are on the side of Satan. You say, well, I didn't know. Now you do. You have no excuse. And don't give me blah, 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 blah. If you're going to try to defend your Bible, you sound like that school teacher in penis. Wah, 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 wah. The Son of God. And the scholars say that he could not know it was the Son of God. And we read in Proverbs 30, they knew about the Son. Now, let's look, let's read on. Verse number 26. <clears throat> look what he says. Ye servants of the Most High God, capital G. This is a polytheist. This is a guy that worships everything. The guy is sitting on his royal th throne, and he's he's got the god of the toilet. <laughs> he's got the god of the toilet paper. He has the god of his pants being down. He's got the god of the... Uh, and he turns around and says, the most high capital G God. He told you earlier that that, that image, that golden image was his god. He wanted you to worship it. He didn't put that as a capital G, did he? All right. That's one place. Look at verse number 28. Uh, 
All right, verse 28. Blessed be the God, capital G of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know what he's saying there? You, you, you think he's just saying Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How about bless the God of the Hebrews? Because they're definitely more different than the Babylonians and the Chaldeans. Nebuchadnezzar is moving a step closer. He'll even get a step closer with the next vision of the tree. He's calling that capital G-O-D of the Hebrews. That's the God that will save you of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he came unto his own. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar couldn't know, not know. No, you scholars don't know nothing. Nebuchadnezzar knows more than you know. Because we're not done with him in Daniel. You realize when he gives a proclamation that God is the God of all gods and the God is the God, and I believe on that God, he falls off the earth. And the next thing that's happened is his son is having a party with all the instruments of the tabernacle of the Lord. All right, so look, look, we're not finished. Bless me the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Bendigo. Hebrew, the Hebrew God. Ready? Who sent his angel. His angel? Are you telling me his angel? You mean where the Bible says, the angel of the Lord? Now, he may not have known about the angel of the Lord, but Daniel did. You know, the Bible says in Revelation that Jesus has his angel. Now, he gets a little bad at the end of verse 28. That you may serve nor... That ye might not serve nor worship any god. That's a bad statement. Except their own god. You know what he just said? There's no other god in Babylon but the Hebrew god. But he did what your typical Baptist do. Hang on to Istar and hang on to Tamus. It's, it's in verse 29, we'll get into it, but against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He didn't know nothing. Now look at verse number 29. We'll probably do this. Because there's no because there's no other God that can deliver after this. Deliver. Well, we learned that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said if their, their God is able to deliver. And who's their God? The Hebrew God. Now, get back to, I know we didn't do it, Wesley. John Wesley says in verse 25, no hurt. See how the God of nature can, when he pleases, control the powers of nature. They're in a fire and they're not hurting. You ever try that when you touch something hot in the stove or the toaster oven, you get marked for a week. The Son of God. All right, what about the Son of God? Probably he had heard Daniel speak of him. Jesus Christ, the angel of the covenant. Now, Daniel and Shadrach, when it said Jesus Christ, they would have said the Messiah. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew about the angel of the Lord and all the power of the angel of the Lord through the writings of the prophets and the writings of Moses and even the minor prophets of the covenant. They sometimes appear before his incarnation. So the scholars say, well, Nebuchadnezzar could never have known. I always want to say Charles Wesley. John Wesley. John Wesley says, maybe Daniel told him. Because you know who was sitting at the king's gate? Daniel. 
You know what's sitting at the king's gate? Mordecai. You know what those two kings knew? They knew about the Messiah. They knew about Jehovah. You know, the, you know what the scholars don't know? They don't know about God. They don't tell others about God. And with their absence of telling people truly about God, well, they don't know anything about God because you didn't tell them. And what they believe is the nonsense you've been believing. Get rid of your Bible that is not the King James. Throw it in the garbage can because God will throw it into the flames of hell forever. God will have a book burning at the great white throne judgment where every NIV and ASB and all those Bibles of Alexandria, all those Bibles of Westcott and Horace, and we throw, hey, here's some books for you guys to read. <laughs> and this final statement before New Jerusalem and New Heavens and New Earth, it's called hell, not Haiti. And imagine the great white throne judge, imagine God telling you, go to hell. Won't be hated. And when I hear a man, and I'm telling you right now, when I hear a man get up and say Hades and teaches and preaches about Hades, I'm sitting there saying, Lord God, he's, he's rebuke him. Rebuke that man in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he won't hear to your words. And Jesus told the disciples, if they won't listen to you, walk out of that city and brush off the dust of your very shoes. Because they would not listen. I'm telling you right now, people who are not in the King James Bible, I pray for rebuke. That's how serious those Bibles are wrong. And this is just one place where they make Jesus one of the sons of the gods. The Mormons believe that Jesus and Lucifer were brothers. And in my commentary of, of Genesis today, we went over there to the son of, son of the morning, Lucifer, and to the morning star in Revelation, which is Jesus, where the modern Bibles in Isaiah says the morning star. And I put those two verses from the NIV and from the King James Bible. The NIV says Lucifer and Jesus, they're the same. They both say morning star. There's only one morning star. NIV and all the Alexandrian Westcott and Horse Bibles say... Lucifer is the morning star, and that morning star, Revelation, I think, 20, says it's Jesus. Jesus says, I'm the morning star. So here they make Jesus one of the sons of the gods. And listen, I studied Greek and Roman mythology when I was in school. My nickname for a while was Styx. Styx is that river in hell, not Hades. I thought it was cool. And let me tell you, in Roman and Greek, Greek, in the Greek mythology, the gods, small G-O-D-S, has children and sons. All the gods that the planets are named of, there are sons of those gods and sons of those gods. Not in the Bible. So here in Daniel, Jesus is lowered as a son of a, any, any of the gods. And the Bible says there are gods. Starts off with Genesis 3. And you shall be as the gods to know good and evil. Does that sound familiar? Well, Jesus is, according to the modern Bible that we read today, and I read them to him, and if you got the, the video, you'll see the screen show up. Jesus is the son of one of them gods. Not the Son of God, the King James. And then you run over to Isaiah 7, and I think it's Revelation 20 and 21. 
and you run the sun of the morning and the great more in the in the in the bright and bright morning star their bibles make lucifer and jesus the same while here making jesus a son of the gods and i'm telling you the mormon church makes jesus and lucifer brothers sons of the gods oh it starts off with a little easter and a little christmas oh i've got a bible that makes it so much easier to read you go to our family website and you'll see that I did a PowerPoint on the New King James. King James, New King James is very serious because it's it's right in many places. <laughs> and the very few dangerous ones it's wrong. So we're gonna stop right there. Nebuchadnezzar knew. And Nebuchadnezzar knew more than what the scholars knew. You say, well, how much did the scholars know? Well, their Messiah walked and talked amongst them and they didn't believe it. The people did. And guess who talked the people out of it? Who talked the people say, crucify him, crucify him? The scholars. Oh, excuse me, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests. And who teaches the Christians today? Out of the King James into a modern Bible. Who teaches the lovey dovey honey kind of great sugary make your tooth decay? The pastors and preachers and teachers that infiltrated the church as wolves. And you were warned by Peter and Paul and by Jesus about wolves. <laughs> 